Welcome back. It's been 26 years since director Spike Lee burst onto the filmmaking scene with his comedy, She's Gotta Have It. He's been stirring things up ever since. With his latest film, Red Hook Summer, opening this month, Lee is back in Brooklyn with another slice of life from the place where he grew up and whose story he continues to tell. Joining me now is director extraordinaire, Spike Lee. Spike, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you, and I know why you have to be in Florida, so keep it up, baby. Yeah, well, let me ask you about that. I want to talk to you about the film, but I'm down here in Florida to fight this voter suppression right. efforts you've been watching and, and, and helping to get fairness. How do you assess where we are when we see voting laws changing all of a sudden? I have a few words for it, Rev. It's skullduggery. It's the okie doke. <laughs> you know, they're trying to pull the bamboozle. The lead is astray. You don't want to run amok. It, it's, uh... It's the okie doke, and, and uh, you knew we knew it happened the last time in Florida, and so there, there's some more shenanigans. Shenanigans. All right. Now let me ask you. Uh, you were there in uh, the convention in 2008. You and Grant Park tonight. I, uh, I was president. right there with you, baby. Yep. And you, uh, the president, even came uh, to your house. You did a fundraiser recently, earlier this year. Uh, where do you think uh, the president is now in this election? You've been quoted as saying it's going to be tight. Do you think people are going to come out? Do you think the president's going to be successful? How do you handicap the race right now? Well, I think it's going to be uh, tight because you see the other guy has been pull all type of tactics. And, you know, when you, when you start talking, using code words like uh, welfare and, and, you know, next can call up Willie Horton's brother. You know, it's the... <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, when people get desperate, you know, it, it's, uh, they're going to do whatever they want to do to win. Now, you, uh, I read somewhere that you met uh, Mitt Romney once. What do you think <laughs> of him? At the moment we met, he was not running for the President of the United States of America. I was in Reagan Airport in Washington, D.C. I was in line to buy something, and he was... I was like two, three people in front of in line, and we turned around and said hello, shook hands, and that was it. Do you think that the base of voters are enthused yet, or there's going to need to be more done to get them enthused? No, I think that is, stuff's really not going to pick up rev, in my opinion, till school starts. When summer's over, that's when uh, people gonna, who've been asleep are going to wake up and say, you know what? I got to register to vote. I got to do this. I got to, I got to help. This I think is going to it's, it's going to be a a late arriving crowd. All right, that's fair. Let me uh, ask you. You are probably one of the top filmmakers in American history. Well, that's and, debatable, but go ahead, Rev. And uh, you <laughs> I have thank done, you for that Brooklyn love. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's true. You've done some some sensational movies, some classics. Now you're going back to Brooklyn. Yes, sir. And uh, I've seen uh, the uh, film that you have coming out later this month. Uh, no, tell it's me Friday, why. Friday, Friday. It's coming New York. out this Friday. In New York. Tell me why you're going back to Brooklyn and what you're trying to communicate with this film. Well, Rev, uh, I wouldn't say I'm going back to Brooklyn because I feel I never left. Brooklyn, I was not born in Brooklyn. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. I moved to Brooklyn when I was a year old, and it's a place I love. I think Brooklyn is one of the most, if you look at the history of Brooklyn and all the people who have come from there, there's no other, there's no other place like it in the world. So what, I, what Red Hook Summer is what I call my ongoing chronicles of Brooklyn, New York. It started with She's Gonna Have It in 1986. That was Fort Green. Do the Right Thing was Bed-Stuy. Crooklyn was Bed-Stuy. He Got Game was Coney Island. Clockers was Borm Hill. So this is, a, and Red Hook is, is one of the most unique neighborhoods. I mean, Red Hook's really strange. Which, I mean, you, you, you gotta go out of your way to even to get there. Yeah. And so that's why, uh, and also Carmelo's from Red Hook. You know, people, you know, he grew up in Baltimore, but he was, Carmelo Anthony was born in Brooklyn and raised in the Red Hook projects. Yeah, you make that point in the film. Yeah. I was reading a, a review in the Huffington Post. It says that the film, it feels like his most personal theatrical work in a decade or so. Red Hook Summer is a solid and often fascinating return to a very specific form from one of the most interesting filmmakers of all time, Watts and all. 
Uh, I, saw, I saw how you left out that warts and all line. <laughs> I brought it back. I brought it back. And I understand you paid for it yourself, shot it in 19 days. Yes. Your first film was She's Got to Have It shot in 12 days, right. also in Brooklyn. Right. Are you t returning to filmmaking roots here? <laughs> no, Rev. I think that some people have gotten this kind of twisted as if Red Hook Summer is my declaration saying I no longer work in Hollywood. That is not the case. For me to tell this film, I had to finance it myself. It was not getting it was not gonna get any made any other way. That's all it came down to. What has changed in the film industry in the last two decades? Is it harder or easier for uh, people to get films done? Is it harder for African Americans? Is it harder for new talent? What has changed? What has changed, Rev, it, it is harder for everybody. Because when we were growing up, the big blockbuster films came out from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Now big, bluster, big blockbuster films come out 12 months a year. And so for a lot of studios, they're only looking to make films going to make a godzillion dollars. And they're not, they, don't, they don't feel it's worth their time to make films that are not just going to make a small profit. And so therefore, it's really hurt the diversity of the films being made and the subject matter, too. Now, uh, let me ask you this. As this film's opening this Friday, and I've already seen it, and I'm sure uh, uh, people that uh, know your work are, are anticipating another uh, Spike Lee joint, and, and you've never moved your offices out of Brooklyn. But I need to ask you about something else. Aside from Brooklyn, both you and I share, Michael Jackson. In fact, you and I sat together at Michael's memorial yeah. where I spoke. At the Staples Center. Yes, at the Staples Center. I understand that you're coming out with a documentary on Michael. Yes, that is true, Rev. I was contacted by Sony Records and the Michael Jackson estate to do a documentary about the making of the Bad Album. So it's done. The world premiere is going to be in the Venice Film Festival August 31st in Italy. And the thing about this, Rev, is that I had full access to Michael's archives. So there is stuff in this documentary that's never been seen before, never heard before, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's great. Even if I made I'm still saying it's great. And you don't have to be a Michael Jackson fan to really love this documentary because it really shows you the genius Michael was and also the hard work he wow. put into his art. He didn't just wake up and do this. He worked hard to That's perfect right. his craft. So often, as you know, we just see we just see Michael Jordan doing a great thing, but we didn't see him in the gym, in right. the weight room, running. I mean, you in this documentary, we see the work Michael Jackson put in. Well, that's going to be exciting, and nobody works harder and does more things than you do, Spike Lee. Well, well, what about right? your man? I, I had to take the mantle from your man, the godfather of soul, Rev. James Brown, hardest working man. You know I wasn't going to interrupt you closing on that. Spike <laughs> Lee, Red Hook Summer opens Friday in New York and elsewhere. Uh, we will uh, be seeing it all over the country this month. Later this month, it'll be opening around the country. Spike, good luck with your film, and thank you for coming in tonight live. Keep Spike doing Lee. That, keep doing that great job down there in Florida, because that's some shenanigans down there, baby. Shenanigans. Thank you, Spike. We'll be right back with a final word from Miami.